This video is a step-by-step -step walkthrough of creating a four-generation vertical family tree in Microsoft Excel. So the end result is going to look something like this, a fairly plain format with eight great-grandparents. If you want to get a little bit fancier, I've left a lot of space for photographs. If you prefer cues for geographical locations, such as the birth location, I've also left space for putting flags in. These are some American state flags, or you can put in country flags. And then finally, if you want to go for the whole shebang with both family photos and flags or whatever kind of icons that you want, this will also fit on this single printed Excel page. So the main challenge when it comes to Excel is that you can't really do it with the standard cells. Let me show you an example of a three generation spreadsheet where you can do everything perfectly with just the standard Excel page. Here I am in Excel. This is a three generation vertical family tree going up to the four grandparents. And these boxes are simply two cells with a colored background. So we can type in, etc. So that is quite simple. The challenge is that I can't find a way of fitting in eight great grandparents onto a single page with a font size that is big enough that is legible. So is there a solution? Well, a bit of experimentation and yes, there is. The answer is to use shapes. What's the shape? These are not cells. This is a shape on top of a cell. So that is what I'm going to be doing with this tutorial. The first thing we're going to do is give ourselves a new blank page. Step one is to set it to landscape mode. Let's go up to file, print, and here the default for a new sheet is actually portrait, which isn't what we want. We want to set this to the landscape orientation. And when we go back to the page, you'll now see dotted lines that represent the printed area for landscape. I'm going to highlight within this dotted line, and then I'm going to set the print area. So I'm going to page layout, print area, set print area. And now I see a, a fixed line. I want to be sure that I don't stray outside those lines. There's one more thing left for the page setup, and I found this through trial and error. I'm going to set the column width of column A to 0.1 of a centimeter. And the reason I do that is because what I found, if I don't, that this leftmost great-grandparent name box can get truncated a little, so it doesn't quite display the left edge of it. It ends up being a little bit off the printed page. So in order to do this, I highlight column A, right-click the entire column, open the column width attribute, and I change that from the default to zero, Point one, And that's it. That's all we're doing with the page setup. Now we can get straight into actually creating our first great grandparent area. So the first name area will start with placing a shape rectangle in and about cell B5. Don't get too hung up about the positioning because we'll just move it once we've got it actually on the worksheet. So we go to insert tab here, illustrations, shapes, and the rectangles. Now you can pick the re rectangle you choose. You may want the ang more angular one. I like the one with the rounded corners. So just click on that. And then nothing happens when you click on it. You actually have to put your cursor into a cell. So I'll just stick mine into B5 there and a square, dark blue, square appears on the screen. That's not exactly what I want. I want a more rectangular shape. And my recommendation is that you go with these dimensions, a height of 1.38 centimeters and a width of 2.73 centimeters. Now at this point, I'll say to you, don't go scribbling down these numbers. I have everything in a companion article to this tutorial, and the link is in the description below. In order to set the height and width, select the shape, right click and go to size and properties down here at the, near the bottom of the menu. 
That opens our options to format the shape. You can see the height and width dimensions are up here at the top. I'm going to set the height to 1.38 and I'm going to set the width to 2.73 and there you can see the height and width set. The reason why I'm using these particular dimensions is that I find that when I have it actually placed where I want, so this first box is going to be just at the edge there of that B5 cell, I'll be able to fit eight of these boxes along the width of a landscape page. That colour of a dark blue, it's going to be difficult to see black text on it. For the male ancestors, I like to colour them a pale blue. Pretty simple, given that we have the format shape properties box open up here, we can simply toggle over to this tab, the fill tab here, and use this color pick to choose the color that I want, which is this blue here. Alternatively, you can use the color pick up here. And finally, I'm going to set the font type and size. The default font type and size in the current version of Microsoft Excel is this Cal Calibri as a size 11. I think in older versions of Excel it would have been Arial size 11. That font is just a little bit too wide in order to fit reasonably long names into the box in a way that they, that they don't truncate. If I set the size down to be lower it's just going to be difficult to read. I want to use one of the narrow fonts that come with Office. There are quite a few. My preferred is one that's called Band Shrift Semi Bold Condensed. This condensed in the name of the font means that it's a narrow font. There's also an Arial Narrow. There's several narrow fonts, but this one I find personally is the most readable when printed. You can do a bit of experimentation to find the font that you prefer. In order to set the font, I've got the shape selected. I'll just type in B A H to pull up the band shifts. Here we go. They're down here. I'll just scroll down a little bit. There's quite a few of the of these, so just pick the one that I've mentioned, which is this semi bold condensed, and that lets me leave the size at 11, so we can have something like. Uh, I want the text to be black, so we can have something like Archibald. Archibald, Postle, Weight, nice long name. I leave it at, at left justified. You could set this to be centered if you like. Make sure you have the entire shape selected and you can click the center there. Just to explain what happens if your surname or your first name is too long to fit into the shape. You don't actually have to do anything special with shapes. That's one of the nice things that shapes have over cells. If I just keep typing, let's say it's Postle, Weight, both of them. Notice that it seems to be going over, but when I go to any other cell, you notice that it is nicely, it's just truncated, which is exactly what I want. So that's it really. And you'd be probably relieved to hear that we're going to be doing a lot of copy and pasting from here on in. So I want eight of these shapes to fit across the page. Within this boundary of the landscape mode, Here's a little tip for you. If you don't see the boundary of the dash line, it does come and go. So go to file, print, and that's all you have to do. This will be already be landscape orientation because you already set that. That doesn't go away. And then just click back and this will reappear for you. I'm going to give myself the first great grandmother. So I'm going to copy and paste the first shape that gives me the same height and width, it just doesn't place it where I want. So now I'm just going to drag and drop and put it closely beside its companion. And then I'm going to stop using the mouse because the drag and drop with the mouse doesn't give you quite precise control. My advice is to use the arrows. Once you've got it roughly in the correct position, use the up and down keys, left and right keys to get it precisely into position. So I'm going to use the up key probably once. I want a small gap between the ancestral pairing. And let me see what that looks like. Yeah, that looks about right, does it? If I go up one again, yeah, that's okay. Went up again with the arrow and that's vertically aligned. Now I just want to change the background color from light blue for the maternal ancestor. And instead of using the property and shapes, I'm going to simply use the fill color up here in the home menu. 
and I'm going to pick this light orange. So that gives me my first ancestral pair at this fourth generation level. And now I want three more of these pairings that will fit in to this rightmost boundary. So I'm going to copy both shapes. So I've selected both shapes, Control C and Control V. And unfortunately, that doesn't put it into any kind of vertical alignment for you. you. Again, you have to drag and drop. Give yourself another little gap. You are going to have to probably have to come back and adjust this. It takes a few iterations, but here's my first go. Just giving it a slightly bigger gap than is between each spousal pair. Now I've got that into place. I'm going to control V again. Gives me my third lot, giving it a slight gap. And then my fourth. And I can see I'm well within the boundary. So I'm going to just bring this over to the right. And now in terms of the spacing, I'm just giving a little bit more of a space between each of the spousal pairs. And that spacing works for me. In terms of vertical alignment, I think these three are fine. This pair is slightly higher, just tell by eye, select them both, one down, click with the arrow, and that's about right. It may take a few minutes to fiddle around with the arrow keys. It shouldn't take longer than that. So this looks like it's all done. I recommend one final check so you, you don't get frustrated when you go to print this out. The display within the worksheet doesn't always match the printed version. So what you think is aligned vertically or what you think is exactly within the boundaries may turn out not to be when you go to print it out. I will say that the print preview is from, for me, it's 99% correct to the printed version. So the final check I suggest that you do is go and take a look at the print preview. So that's file, print, and just make sure here that it's not spilling off to the left or to the right. That's not truncating the edges in it slightly. And it's not, so this looks great to me. Okay, so that's the fourth generation. I'll tell you that that's the hardest generation to do to fit into this landscape with. So from here, it should be plainer sailing and a little bit quicker. Quick interruption, folks. We're working our way through about 17 steps to complete this family tree template. If you want a shortcut, we offer a bundle that has this template and three others for our four generation family trees with photos, with flags or plain for about the price of a cup of good coffee. If you want to do it yourself, let's keep going. The next step is to create the four grandparent boxes nicely positioned under their respective parents. So I'm going to take this first great grandfather box and I'm going to control C and control V to copy and paste it. And then I'm going to position it round about cell C14. Just round about there. And then I'm going to nudge it to the left using the arrow keys to make it fairly central underneath this pair. At this point, you may want to widen this box. Again, if you have long family surnames or first names, we have more space available to us below the fourth generation. So if you want wider boxes, then go ahead and add maybe half a centimeter using the width property. I'll leave it as is. And now I want a grandmother. So I'm just going to go back up here to the pink box or the orange box, copy and paste that. And now I'm gonna drag it to about cell F14. Use the up arrow key to kind of align it with the grandparent I've already put in place. And then I'm using the right arrow key just to nudge it to the right to make it reasonably centered. And that looks to me to be horizontally aligned. There you go. I said it correctly this time. Now I've got this pair in place. I'm just going to copy the, both of them, select them both, control V, and then that keeps their spacing so I can move them together. I can use the arrow keys to nudge them into place. That looks about right. I think I want to go one more. 
arrow nudge to the left. Maybe two. I might move this one over slightly to the left. There we go. So that is the four grandparents. So I guess you know what's coming next. We want the second generation line. This time I'm going to copy this box and paste it round about cell D23. Round about here and just get it into the middle. I just copy the pink box and bring down to about L23, around about here, and then just nudge into place. That looks about right. And then finally, we've got the home person, which is either male or female. I'll take the female and I'm going to paste it around about H29. So 29. And then we'll kind of align it kind of centrally. There we have the basic layout without any of the connector lines, but we now have the name boxes for first and last names spaced out. So take a, take a break, or have a cup of coffee, and we're going to come back to the final set of steps, which are unfortunately also a little fiddly in that we're dealing with the connector lines, but the trick is to get one set of connector lines into place per generation and then use copy and paste to save time. So for the connector lines, just to remind ourselves at the look that we're going for, what I prepared earlier, so we've got two short vertical lines, this horizontal line beneath them, and then this long vertical line. We're going to use the shapes again, so go up to the insert tab, illustrations, shapes, and this time we want the lines. I don't want the one with any arrows. I want this straight line. Just click that and then put your cursor roughly where you want to go and just draw a very short line. Don't worry about the length for the moment. Now that we've got this line on the page, the first thing I want to do is to change the color to black. I think it defaults to a kind of a light blue or possibly a gray. This is black here. Then I want to position it so that it's reasonably central and that it intersects the box. The trick here in terms of the intersection is to use the circle as your guide. So that now is intersecting. You don't really see that until you take, until you click away, which is a bit annoying, but that's about of an intersect. Now, is this central? It's difficult to see because we've got an empty box. The trick here is to put in a very long random letter last name as a temporary measure. I'm just going to click into this box. I'm going to not bother with the first name. So I hit the enter key to come down to the second line. And now I'm going to put in very long last name. It's got 14 characters that are displayed. And therefore, we halfway along is about between seven and eight and the eighth character. So once again, I'm going to click it and I'm going to use the right arrow key to move it slightly to the right and get it beneath the G. That is about halfway along. The next thing is we're going to set the length. I'm going to set this quite precisely. I'm going to right click, go to size and position, and I am going to set the height to be one centimeter. So now I've got that in place, I'm going to copy that line to give me a second line under the spouse. So control C, control V. Now I've got to move it to be reasonably centered. And then I'm just going to use the circle to do the intersect. Is that the intersect? No, that's just slightly above. So I just want to bring it down one little arrow nudge that is intersecting. Is it in the center? I'll just copy very long last name. No, I need to move it slightly to the right with my arrows and that is centered. Back now to the next line that I want to put in place, which is the horizontal line that 
intersects the bottom of both these vertical lines. So I'm just going to, well, just copy one of the lines. Pull it down a bit, and now I'm just going to use drag and drop to pull this up. And I'm going to use the vertical grid line just to make sure that it's actually is horizontally aligned. So I'm just going to move that up a little bit. Is that straight? Is that a straight line? Yes, it is a straight line. So at this point, I'm going to get the left side aligned and intersecting with the left vertical line. You'll see why in a minute, why I'm focusing on the left side. But I just want to make sure that that is, let me have a look and see, is that what I want? Oh, it is. Now I've got the left hand side aligned. I'm going to use the width control. So I've highlighted the line. I've got the format shapes open here. I'm going to use this arrow just to nudge the length and it lengthens it to the right. That's why we kept the left side. We've got left side fixed in place and this width just lengthens it by expanding to the right. So one more go to get that circle aligned. I think that may be aligned. I'm just going to click out of it just to see. And that's exactly what we want. So that was line number three. The last line we want is the line that comes down from here to here. Again, I'm going to copy a vertical line. I am going to get that into place. Don't bother too much about the central positioning. For now, we want to get the length correct. So I'm just nudging it up at the moment with the arrow and I'm watching the circle. And I think that is on the money, maybe not quite. One more up and that's on the money, yeah. So it's not slightly overshot. Selecting the vertical line, I'm going to use the height and I am going to just keep nudging it up and you can see the circle is approaching the shape and I just want to get it to intersect and there it is intersecting but I don't think that is centered this time I'm going to put into the first name I'm going to put very long last name I want the same number of characters but it just wanted to be on the first line so I said it had to be between the n and the g to be centered so I'm going to nudge it slightly to the right there we go so if that was all a bit finicky, the good news is that we can use copy and paste for much of the work for the next set of spousal pairs. We're going to copy each of these lines. I'm holding down the control key while clicking on the lines. So it's quite easy to leave one of the lines behind, by the way. Then control C and control V to paste. And there you go. I left one behind. <laughs> OK, I just undo that by control Z. So holding down the control key, I'm just clicking that middle line there. One more try, control C, control V, there we go. So now I'm going to drag and drop. I'm holding down the mouse now and I'm just dragging this across. And once I've got it reasonably positioned, letting go of the mouse. And now I'm going to use the arrow keys to nudge it up. And now I am going to nudge to the left to get it reasonably centered. That looks fine to me. Okay, so that looks good to go. So we're on a roll now, so let's keep going. I want the connector lines from grandparents to parent. I think I've got all the lines there. Control C, Control V. Yep, this time I've got it. I'm going to bring this down now. This isn't going to be aligned correctly because it's going to be too narrow. Line that up vertically. And then I'm going to detach the right hand vertical line. Line that up vertically with the this one above it. And now that I've got that in place, I'm going to use the width control to lengthen that line that looks to me like it's kind of perfect and it is and now all i have to do is center this line i'm using the arrow key that looks to me like it's about centered i'm going to copy the four lines involved one two three four
So the final set of connector lines are from the two parents to the home person. You've probably noticed these are going to be shorter vertical lines because there's less space than in the previous generations. That is by choice. I want to leave space to fit an image below and above each person. If you choose not to do that and you want to have a more symmetric layout, you can always move that home person down a few cell spaces, a few rows. Just make sure that you don't go below the boundary for the print cut off. But I'm going to leave it as I had it at just at row 29. So I'm going to take this single horizontal line. I'm going to align it with that particular grid line. And now I'm going to use the width control. So, And now I'm going to give myself a vertical line. And then copy and paste. And that is the look that suits me. You may prefer to be more consistent with the other generations and have a look that is like this. So you've got these tiny little vertical lines, but it still gives a bit more consistency. That they're about 0.3 centimeter. It's just a matter of choice. The one thing you may want is that the display doesn't have the grid lines. It's not going to print out with those grid lines, but you may want the display on your monitor to match the printout. Select the entire worksheet using Control A, then go up to the fill color and select the white color. And there you have it. There you have it.